Hi everybody, welcome to a new video. Today we're gonna to talk about Andy Rourke, bass player of the Smiths. The Smiths are considered by the critics as one of the most important bands to emerge from the British independent music scene of the 1980s. The band mixed 1960s rock and post-punk with a firm rejection of the synth-pop sound that was predominant at the time. Lead singer Morrissey and guitarist John Marr famously dictated the musical direction of the Smiths, but for being a band considered built around guitar and vocals, the Smiths are pretty cool in the bass department. In fact, most of their songs have very intricate and standard bass lines, and on top, the trademark bright and crispy tone of Andy Rourke's precision bass is immediately recognizable. When Andy started playing the bass, he was really struck with Stanley Clark, Funkadelic and American funk music. The funky vibe comes out in a few songs like Barbarism Begins at Home or This Charming Man. Andy's bass lines are percussive and syncopated, and at times remind me of another band of the era, Duran Duran. But the Smiths have a simpler setup, and on top, their guitar work relies mainly on chords, leaving a lot of space for the bass, which becomes the element that carries the groove. And this is something that can vaguely remind of Simon Gallup and The Cure. So how did Andy Rourke get his tone? The first thing to talk about is that the Smiths guitarist Johnny Marr is known for using extensively a pretty unusual tuning for rock music. Mars guitar was tuned to F sharp, a whole step up. Down tuning is very common, especially in rock music, and has two benefits. One, it makes the songs easier to sing. Two, when you detune your guitar, you can put higher gauge strings without the added tension. Higher gauge strings sound warmer, so it makes the guitars have more harmonic content. It's pretty impressive to see how many different tunings are commonly used in music. Go and have a look on Wikipedia. But what about tuning up? Why not use a capo? I have searched everywhere, but there seems to be no special reason. Anyway, according to Wikipedia, bass player Andy Rourke kept using a standard tuning, but on a 2011 interview, Andy himself said that he also had to use that stupid F sharp tuning. And it's in a different key, and so I couldn't play it properly. Yeah. That's a tune up to stupid F sharp. Oh, everything was tuned up to F sharp? I'd say 80% of it. Yeah. So Wikipedia might be wrong this time around. As a matter of fact, the extra bright and sharp tone of Andy Rourke's precision bass sounds like it's tuned up. If you're going to tune up your bass, I recommend you put on extra light gauge strings, because otherwise it's going to be real hard for your fingers. My fingers are being ripped like ripped to ribbons, I'm going to say. On top of the F-sharp tuning, to get your Andy Rourke sound, set the amp EQ fairly flat, open up the tone control on the bass most of the way, and play with the pick close to the bridge. Number 2. 10th chords. A very frequent element in the music of the Smiths is Rourke using 10th chords to create harmonic interplays between the bass and the guitar, kinda like having a second bass line. A 10th chord is the easiest and best way to spell a major or minor chord on a bass, because it has both the low frequencies of the lower string and a bright and distinguishable high note. This use of 10th chords is pretty unusual in rock music, but there's one famous bass player that used them all the time, Flea of Red Hot Chili Peppers. I've made a whole video about it, go check it out. Another interesting passage is the spelling of a dominant 7th chord on the main riff of Big Mouth Strikes Again. Oscillate widely is also pretty cool. The bass line is based on triads, and there is one particular passage made of two triads, the second spelt backwards. And also a remarkable little power chord on the main riff of the beautiful ragged driven line of Rubber Ring. Mm. 
Number 3. Root on the 1, octave on the 2. Using octaves to build bass lines is very common in funk music. However, there is one particular figure that Rourke really likes to use, and that's playing root on the 1 and the higher octave on the 2. Number 4. Repetition. And his bass playing was fluid and sophisticated. The way he wove his motifs around Mars guitar figures during the entire song was truly something to behold. One of the reasons why his motifs were so recognizable and easy to remember is that they repeated through the whole song. And is a very tidy player, and most of his bass lines consist in one or two figures only, repeated endlessly without any significant variation. The Smiths rely heavily on the natural minor scale, like The Cure, but in the case of Andy Rourke, melodic variations and nuances are way more common. His charming man, for example, used the 5th, 6th and 2nd grade of a major scale to create a super catchy and melodic bass line that interplays with Mars guitar. So the bass guitar really holds up the melodic structure of the songs, both defining the groove and in most cases also the melody. To sum it up, Andy Rourke plays nice and simple, not at all complex, but real tasty. The bass line carries the song in most cases, and it's always very smooth, sophisticated and bottom heavy. Once again, nothing too flashy, but his bass lines complement the song perfectly, and his melodic sense is really impressive. So he's definitely a player you should check out. Please let me know in the comments which bass player would you like me to review next. I read every comment and try to make everybody happy, but these videos take a great deal of time and effort to make and I had to give priority to the most popular requests. Thank you very much for watching, please don't forget to subscribe, leave us a comment, a thumb up and follow me on Instagram.